Hello, hello, welcome back. Um, let's find out if our problem is solved. You know, I have literally no idea what modern hype the time quest is supposed to mean. For once, you have just absolutely got me at a disadvantage. Ah, okay. There's a Playmobil licensed computer game? That's amazing. I never understood the appeal of Playmobil as a kid. They had the aesthetic of, of Lego guys, but they did not have the... Actually, I want to be human. They have the aesthetic of Lego with sort of chunky, inaccurate uh, human shapes, but then all of the vehicles are pre-made plastic things that you can't uh, adjust in any way. Actually, let's use two humanity so we can get enough Estus. What did I do that last time? Have I wasted a humanity? Oh well. Yeah, no more stuttering, are we good? Of course, because I did like five different things that might have solved the problem, I have no idea which, if any of them, were the, <laughs> were the cause of it. Is it because I haven't turned my computer off in three days? Is it because my router needed rebooting? Um, is it because of all the processes I killed that were doing stuff that didn't need to be? We will never know. So, um, the painted world of Arianis. Is it Arianis? There's another painted world in Dark Souls 3. Um... is a, a kind of a cosmic clearinghouse where, where things that don't have a place in the world are able to just uh, chill and escape the horrors of reality. Although, there's some weird stuff about that. Yeah, we are in the painted world. <coughs> because uh, the NPC at the end of this world basically says, this place is peaceful. The people who live here are chill. Um which is not the experience we will have had, as you can see already. <laughs> so, you know, whether or not this land is peaceful and its inhabitants kind is anyone's guess. But, um... Its, it's position is, is ostensibly a kind of a safe place for all of the, the loathed things in the world to disappear to and be free from terrible eventualities, but um, it is also kind of used as sort of a, not a vault exactly, um, what they said, the, the, the British end of the tunnel, because that's definitely a lie. But it is also the kind of thing that, that you would find written on propagandistic welcome to the country leaflets. Regardless, um, it's kind of used as a, a sort of a, a big hole to throw anything they don't want around in by the gods of Anor Londo. Um, anything that's a problem to their supremacy as the primary gods of the world. So. This guy's too high up for me to actually hit him with anything. Also, that little um, bloom of fire around me, I believe, was a... Uh, I can't remember what the term is, but I think it's like a an Estus Resonance or something. When other players kindle bonfires, that was a hole to drop off of. Um, but yeah, so when an other player uh, kindles a bonfire, see those guys, those guys are going to flap over here and they're really tough. They're quite difficult to fight. So when I get to this, I think, because Dark Souls loves to play nasty tricks on you, so when you take this item, or when you move around this area, well apparently there we go. <laughs> Two of them um, get triggered to fly over here. If we're lucky, we can get them to fly off the edge and fall to their deaths, which is an ironic thing for a bird to do. Let's see if we can get lucky. Nice convenient corner. Nope, no luck for us. They have a very powerful grab attack that will cause a lot of problems if they manage to land it on us like this. 
Um, so generally speaking, it's a good idea to explode them with magic from far away, but they're quite magic resistant, or to get them to jump off the edge. Bird death, primary cause of laments about the world of Ariamis. So, um, yeah, I don't. Do I need to fight these guys? They'll come up behind me and surprise me later if I don't. But yeah, so those birds are a pain in the ass, and you kind of have to deal with them. Hi, right, Lisa. There's a whole bunch of just like trash <laughs> thrown into this place. Anything that's kind of a corrupting influence they don't want around, or anything that might threaten their supremacy as the as the, the prime deities of the world gets shunted into into this painting. Um, so whether it was created originally to be a safe place for, you know, the uh, maligned of the world to get out of the world, um, what it is now is full of um, these sort of blight corrupted hollows. These guys over here with the explosions. I mean, yeah, it's kind of got some of that energy to it. Um, and... Uh, some other stuff. There's an interesting thing a bit further in to do with um, Velka. Velka is interesting because Velka is kind of the goddess of justice and it's implied through a, a few different ways that Velka may have been oppositional to the other gods of Anor Londo, but like still being from that sort of set and involved with all their stuff, but uh, where the others are all pursuing their own sort of selfish goals and stuff within the world. Um, Velka may actually have been devoted to her to her divine responsibility to to justice and therefore may be involved in any number of things. Velka is associated with uh, ravens in, and or crows in particular. The, one of the reasons that there is a connection between this place and Velka is that those crow demons will flap over and fight you. But there is also um, a unique weapon available here called Velka's rapier and I think there are a couple of there's a spell that's associated with her, and I think this is where you get the um, outfit of the Pardoner, which is the guy you meet in the in the Belfry Tower. There is an implication that Velka herself is involved with, um, not the Curse of Undeath specifically, but the way it's managed in the world, because if you, um, you know, if you're the Goddess of Justice and chief boss god guy is like, hmm, what if maybe we break the laws of causality and attempt to prolong the universe beyond its natural lifespan? Um, ho ho ho, delightfully devilish, Gwyn. Missed. Uh, okay, I might, I might even just commit my soul spears to these two because they're such a pain. Anyway, um, so the fact that it's a raven that, um, or a giant crow that takes you to Firelink Shrine in the first place is perhaps meaningful with regards to that. Um, similarly, the fact that there are raven demons here and a bunch of other Velka stuff can be meaningful. But yeah, so it might be that she, she holds that it was wrong to fuck about with uh, prolonging the Age of Fire to begin with. That's all for you. They've also got nice asses, you know. As 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 like bird people go, there's not a lot of cause for a well developed gluteus maximus in in birds, generally speaking. Much more energy goes into the pectoral muscles for flight purposes. Try jumping off? Damn, really? I never would have thought of that. This, I believe, is the location of an item. One of the only changes made between the. Um, original game and this remaster is uh, the movement of the item that was normally in that spot. It is originally the two-finger charm, the two-finger talisman, something like that. Um, I think you start the game with it or you can get it at the Undead Merchant now, but um, it's a, a multiplayer item that does something. can't remember what. Anyway, it's there in the base game and it's replaced with 20 humanities here. In fact, I might have it in my inventory. What does it do? Uh, I apparently do not have it. Nope. Incidentally, this is the uh, item that unlocks this whole zone, the Peculiar Doll. 
There was once an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. This is implicitly uh, the boss of this area, who is kind of the ruler of this world, even though she's not the person who created it. The, uh, the Arianus who painted this world is, is a mystery that is never really elaborated on. I think that's all of the items we have to grab here. So, time to move on and probably get mobbed by more crows. We can cut that down while we're here, but... Oh, there's tons of guys here, I always forget. One of the difficulties of this zone is that a lot of areas look super accessible but aren't. Which is unusual for Dark Souls. So anything that goes down there is going to die, because that's not... Okay. See, this is exactly illustrating what I was just talking about. This is, in fact, a survivable hole. A perfectly reasonable hole. A hole anyone would be happy to live in. Rather than a uh, death hole that you die from falling in. Of which, like, there are a ton that just look like this, but if you fall in, you die. It's often useful to get the crow, t uh, crow demons to drop in. So yeah, if Valka herself was oppositional to the other gods of Anor Londo, which, as we've discussed, is a reasonable uh, inference, then it stands to reason that things associated with her would also be disposed of in some way, perhaps by shoving them in a painting. But yeah, the boss of this area, Priscilla, is... Um, her full title is Half-Breed Priscilla, and it's implied... Well, it's unambiguous that she is half dragon and the other half is presumably um, the kind of thing that the gods of Anorlando are. So um, obviously the gods of Anorlando are very 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 anti-dragon considering they based their rulership of the world on having uh, freed said world from the yoke of the dragons. Although what exactly the dragons were doing is anyone's guess. Therefore, something as inconvenient as a crossbreed between these two supposedly fundamentally warring entities uh, would be, you know, awkward and disposed of. I suppose it's kinder to throw her into a painting than to kill her, but uh, still, I do not want to be trapped in a painting forever, even if it is a nice, beautiful, snowy world. Ah, gold coin, lovely. I think I missed that coin last time I came through this zone. Uh, aha! I know where we are now. So she's actually quite a fun boss to fight, but um, yeah, it's implied fairly unambiguously that the uh, girl mentioned in the Peculiar Doll is definitely her. Or was, I suppose. It is a total mystery who, if anyone, fucked Seath. It's implied... Well, I say it's implied. It's kind of a reach. Um, people say, like, oh, Seath must be Priscilla's dad because he's the only dragon around anymore and he's the only dragon who had any real contact with the gods of Anor Londo in a way that wasn't um, directly murdery. So it's entirely possible that they are directly related that way, but um, anyone who says that um, her mother is any particular entity is absolutely reaching. There is no information on that in any any direct sense. Ouch. It's often useful to bring a fire weapon to this area just so that you can um, deal with these guys without getting that nasty stank all over. I mean, she's actually not scaleless. If you look closely, you can see that she has scales on her character model um, around her forehead um, and cheeks. And her tail has scales as well. But we don't know why Seath was scaleless. After all, um, before the... If I, if I do it just right, I should be able to... No, nope. <laughs> I fucked that up. Um, I was not, in fact, able to backstep out of the way. Fortunately, I do have some moss left. Do I have some moss left? There we go. Uh, her fuzziness is like the dress she's wearing on her body, but if you take a close look at her face, which we will be able to do, um, you can see that she does have some scales. Ha! <laughs> nice. Very good. He was absolutely seething. 
But interestingly, how can he not have been mortal? The immortal dragons existed for eons, millennia before the existence of disparity could um, allow the existence of mortality. They only retain their immortality uh, past the Age of Fire, or during the Age of Fire, because they already have these, um, these scales due to their primordial existence from before. I think that after um, the possibility of these things came into existence, they then had to deal with the fact that they were now vulnerable to things like disease or the ravages of time. Even if they are immortal, that doesn't necessarily mean they don't grow old and frail. So I wonder if Seath either was a new dragon, perhaps he was the first dragon ever born after stasis ended and new things began to be able to be put into the world and, you know, as a dragon who existed after um, the existence of, who was created, who was born after the existence of disparity, he did not have those uh, conveniently pre-existing scales of immortality, perhaps. That is total conjecture on my part, but I think it fits the facts fairly well. Um, because similarly, I believe that Lord Nito, his title is First of the Dead. I don't think that necessarily refers to a first amongst equals kind of, kind of position. I think that Grave Lord Nito may in fact have been the first person ever to have died. He was the first entity to experience death. He was the first of the dead, and now he rules the dead. So yeah, um, there's no real indication who's, who Seath's mother might have been. It could have been any of the any of the gods of Anor Londo, really. We, we don't know one way or the other. So Ariannis is actually a fairly small area, but it's quite tightly coiled. There's just this entry castle -y bit, which has many different layers, and then there's this back bit, and then I think the final boss is over there. This Colosseum, though, has a few different interesting items to grab, if I can get this jump right. And I could not. This might take a few tries. Hmm. Is this the way back down here? Yeah. You kind of have to run in circles here for a bit to get it right. Um, for some reason, I always end up convinced that that uh, is not the way through. But definitely, you do have to jump across. I remember doing it. If I haven't played this game in a long time and I play through, I get stuck here because I can't figure out how to get that item. And I have to get every item. I have to hoover them all up like a greedy little baby. Priscilla's size is interesting as well because... Um, She's larger than some of the other gods of Anor Londo. So if that's the case, is that because of her dragon blood? Or is that because, um, you know, those gods are variable? Or perhaps her mother is a giantess. Do giantesses even exist? We have only ever seen male giants. If I remember correctly, the Painted World of Arianus was actually a test zone. Um, before the game was released, they uh, built this. Yeah, I've been through there. They built this whole area as a basic, as kind of a vertical slice to establish the game's themes and mechanics, and you know, build the basics and put it all together and make sure that it worked as a prototype. And then, as the first DLC of the game, they sort of tidied it up and finished it and um, rendered it into the version we have today. Just a fun little side fact about this zone you know as i continue failing to jump across it there's a very specific moment at which you tap the jump button at the very back as far as i know there's no other way to get to the other side of that um i can't even remember what it is i think it's just like a humanity or something or a soul the difference between souls and humanity is interesting as well and what they might be and what they might mean um it is, I believe, eventually confirmed in Dark Souls 3 that humanity is a fragment of the Dark Soul. Um, but the games treat it mechanically as something separate entirely. Um, after all, a soul is not a soul. A soul is a collection of energy to some extent. Because, um, you know, if you pop a unit's soul uh, you know, you pick up a soul of a great hero and then you pop it and you gain a certain number of souls. Um, that's just a numerical value that's provided for you as a player. 
I, you know, it's not that that one guy had 15,000 souls in him. And so it's just a representation of how strong that one particular soul happened to have been. Which is ultimately why you're sent around to go kill all these guys and take their souls. Um, you kind of need to grow your own soul. You need to become large. You need to eat up all the souls so that you become an entity with the sort of mythic weight uh, that Gwyn himself had. And then, of course, you can be sacrificed the way that he was sacrificed, or he sacrificed himself. Come on. Okay, this is dumb. I'll come back for that later. I've been defeated. Oh no, I've given in. I've committed the cardinal sin of Dark Souls. I've given up. But this is starting to make for bad radio, so let's just move on. Doubtless someone will eventually be like, um, actually, there's an easy way to get that. You just go around the other way, and then there's a secret thing, and you go through the thing, and you drop down from the other thing. Um, and let me tell you, I don't want to hear it. Oh, hey, there's a bird. Cool. Oh, interesting. I'm surprised you don't know anything about Dark Souls. Um, I recommend that you go watch my old ass Let's Play, my very first Let's Play from like seven years ago, <laughs> which was a very lengthy and in-depth Let's Play of the Dark Souls. Um, I have changed some of my opinions about a lot of the inferences I made and my thoughts about how things work since then, but for the most part, it's still perfectly our oh, beans. Get birded. Well, it's best to stay calm and not get in a not get in a flap. There's got to be better bird puns than that. I mean, yeah, the quality was very weak compared to my current ones, but um I don't have the energy to be as obsessive <laughs> as I was back then. Um or perhaps it would be fairer to say that my current Let's Plays are as obsessive, but about properties that are easy to be easier to be obsessive about. Plus, I yeah, foul play, of course, foul play was right there. But um, yeah, my uh, my new Let's Plays are a lot more a lot more polished than those ones. But I I don't have the energy to research a fifty hour Let's Play, and I don't have the the heart to stick with one for a year. There's a reason why I implemented a rule when I decided which games I was going to let's play. Um, namely, that I would pick no game over 20 hours, unless it's absolutely legendary, in which case I'm willing to go up to maybe 25 hours. Because at three 20 minute episodes a week, that's an hour a week, which means that, you know, for a 20 hour game, that's um, 20 weeks to get through, which is five months i think so that's the absolute top limit and I, I usually aim for like 10 to 12 hour games yeah i'm just ignoring these ones because i feel ashamed of my inability to come up with puns on the fly a hallmark of my early let's plays was constant constant puns but um i just can't seem to do it anymore i don't know why it was a punderful time in my life there you go that one's for free But yeah, so like, I care about um, Dishonored nearly as much as I care. Well, not as much as I cared about Dark Souls, because I was crazy for Dark Souls. But, um, a lot. But it's just, there's a lot less in it. <laughs> it's a shorter game, so there's less stuff in the game itself. And there's also not, you know, hundreds of hours of people making lore videos on YouTube for me to be angry about their, oh, fuck off, about their inability to understand what a metaphor is, for example. Lady Boyle video will be an ambiguous amount of time. It is coming soon, TM. Um, I am not going to be abandoning that Let's Play. I want to finish it and I will finish it. But the issue is that um, I've been really ill and um, any time I don't make a Let's Play for like a month or two, I stop. This is, this is going to kill me. This is disastrous. Um, yeah, any any time I don't make a let's play for 
a chunk of time I end up um oh we're fine um basically losing all of my skills I forget how to do that style streaming is much easier than making a let's play um so I don't get it what's a meta Ugh, meadow what's a meadow for god damn you're on fire today um Anyway, so I am working on two small, mini, very short Let's Plays just to kind of shake the rust off and get back to um, get back to uh, knowing how to make a Let's Play. And then after that, I will be resuming the Dishonored Let's Play and you will finally, finally see what happens at Lady Boyle's party. I'm sure it's a lovely time and everybody has a nice, uh, a nice time there. Uh, I suppose I might as well say what those are. I'm planning one on, um, I am planning one of Mist, because A, it's legendary, B, it's short, C, uh, I have a lot of stuff to say about it, and it fulfills every single criterion I have for making a Let's Play. I've actually had that, um, I've actually had that in the works for, like, I think, like, a couple of months. I think I, I started planning it a couple of months ago. Maybe even just before I got sick, and uh, oh, that's gonna that's gonna be coming over here. So I want to back off a bit. Um, yeah. So um, I started to started to plan that, did my research, had it all planned out, and then I then I think that was when I got sick with COVID around two. So um, yeah. I'm going to start on that shortly, and um, that will probably be like six episodes maybe, and then after that it will be time for Dishonored. The other one is going to be um, a, let's play of, a let's play of my first attempt to play a multiplayer game of a very, very complicated, very, very detailed, very, very long um, strategy game called Dominions 5, which is a little bit legendary in like complicated strategy game circles. Um, for just being excessively overly detailed and having a ton of interesting stuff that can happen in it. Um, I am quite bad at it, but I want to see how far I go. I've actually started recording and editing episodes of that already. The multiplayer game is ongoing, however I won't be posting them until um, at least part way through the match because I don't want to give my opponents some kind of strategic advantage because, you know, doing my due diligence, I did ask in the... Uh, the match chat to see if anyone minded me recording uh, episode my, my turns as episodes of a Let's Play. Nobody did, but that does mean that um, if they are smart enough, they might <laughs> they might look up my you know Discord name, which is the same as my usual internet name, and then am I actually hurting this thing? Does it have a health bar? And if they do that, then they will find my videos, and then they will be able to see what I'm up to. So I'm quite excited for that to go live. It's not up to my usual quality because um, it is the sacrificial first pancake. As I've said, uh, I very rapidly lose skill. So um, the Dishonored episodes that I was making when just before I got sick were the episodes that I am proudest of in pretty much any Let's Play I've made. Um, I, I, I thought that Let's Play was really coming to, into its own and was really fun and was really going very well. Um, so in order to live up to that, I kind of have to get back. And so then the first few episodes of anything I make are just garbage. So the, um, it should be a fun Let's Play, the, uh, the new one, the Dominions Let's Play, but, um, definitely not up to my previous quality standards because it is the sacrificial pancake. It's the thing I make to shake off the rust and figure out how to make stuff again. Because, um, the longer I don't do it, the more I sort of build up a kind of a, an aversion to getting back to whatever it was, you know? I'm always like, oh, I'll never be able to be as good as I was, or whatever. So, in order to escape that, I have to make something bad. This is a pretty easy place to get crows to throw themselves to their deaths, but that one's not high enough to have died. <laughs> uh, so with a bit of luck, I can bait the other ones down. There's like four of them up here. Uh, in fact, it's... A bit like Blight Town in that it's not infrequent to have just bird corpses flop down next to you unexpectedly as they hurl themselves off the staircase in their desperation to come and fight you. 
However, this one has carefully made its way... Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> he beefed it. He absolutely ate shit. He took a gnarly fall. And other things that skateboarders in 1989 would say. I think that's all of them, but I can't quite see. Yeah, there we go. Nope. Ha <laughs> ha. Sneaky motherfucker, there's another one. Interestingly, these guys don't have collision until um, you trigger them to start their like animations. They are, they're pretty much the only enemies in Dark Souls that are just kind of there until you go wherever it is that they, that they move to. That one is the one that flies over to that rooftop to attack you, which we saw earlier when it killed me. So because of that, it's not, it's not a real enemy. It just spawns in when, you, when it starts its actual animation. So there's a few more things to explore back in the castle-y bit, and there's an, that's that item that I couldn't fucking reach. I don't think there's anything else on these balconies. So let's have a final attempt to get that item. And if it doesn't work... Ah, beans. I think we can come at it from the other side a lot later through this zone, maybe? But don't quote me on that. What have we got down here? That's a death drop. Okay, let's just move on and see if we can get to the other stuff from the other side. I love that panting noise that the giant rats make. Oh, hello, sir. I didn't realize you were here. Um, please excuse me. Apologies for any inconvenience. No, you don't. You don't need to come up here. It's fine. Um, it's it's really not an issue, sir. Sir, I would would you mind leaving, sir? This isn't your space. This is ow. Completely uncalled for. Well, that's his problem. Oh, I have a shitload of souls. I should be careful. There is a... There's two... I think there's two shortcuts that let us get back to the, um, the centre. But there's a couple different ways we can go. There's a staircase that takes us down... Oh! Hi! Very ambushy today. You know what they say, though. A bird in the hand is worth two in the ambush. Hopefully he'll just stand still and let me blast him into into nothingness. Or, you know, might wail on me a bit more. It's kind of hard to judge the hitbox for their attacks. Is that just because bells are important in Dark Souls? I straight up don't even know. <laughs> I straight up don't even know if you, there's a bell in this area. This is like a Colosseum-y thing. This isn't a bell tower. Anyway, over here is a fog door that leads either to the boss arena or... Oh no, this is... We've tu we got turned around. Right, that door over there leads to the boss arena. This leads into the courtyard of the castle-y place we've been wandering around. And that is a returning enemy from Demon's Souls. Oh, ladder rung. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, that's an edge case, but I'll, I'll allow it. So that is the, the something. I think it's a boss in Demon's Souls, but it's just a guy who's here. Um, it's got a name like the Phalanx. The something Phalanx? I forget. How are you so good at these? The phalanx demon, yeah, that's the one. Um, not this guy though, he's just a guy. So because we're a bit low on hit points, we're going to go back and rest and spend all of our lovely filthy Luca. Which looks like we can level up twice, which is good. Um, I'm tempted to ram it all back into intelligence again, but I do want to get a little bit more endurance. I'm probably going to hit 20 Endurance and then leave it there for the rest of the game. Oh hey, what's that guy wearing? That's the Mask of the Child and the Warrior Armor suit, I think. And I think that was the Spider Shield on his back, I'm not sure. So yeah, we've got a nice convenient shortcut open because Dark Souls is all about the shortcuts. Um, and we're going to give these guys some shortcuts too. And they might give me one. So 
So, as I've said, this was a boss in uh, Demon Souls, but in Dark Souls it's just kind of a guy who's here, or just an absolute pile of guys. Actually, we'll have to go back and become human. In fact, let's do that now, since we have one liquid humanity floating around. Because there is a uh, an NPC invader that I want to trigger. So if we reverse, if we reverse hollowing here and we go around the right, um, then there is a guy who is extremely peculiar. He might be a reference to um, the famous uh, cosmic horror short story, The King in Yellow. His name is Xanthus King Jeremiah, and Xanthus, I believe, means yellow, and he is wearing yellow clothes and a yellow um, headpiece, turban. It's a giant, it's a giant wiggly um, egg beater looking thing on his head. It's very strange. But then, it's a strange people. Uh, a strange place full of strange people, rather. From his clothes, and I think a pyromancy he drops, we can learn that one of the things that got thrown in here so that... Um, yeah, I said he's a boss in Demon's Souls. And he's he returned here not as a, a boss, but just as a guy. Um, or I still think I said that. Oh, you mean, do you mean Xanthus King Jeremiah? He might be. I have not played Demon's Souls because I never had a PS4? PS3? Whichever one it was. But he's, um, he's Xanthus King whoever, or Xanthus whoever is, is a retur returning character all through the Soulsborne stuff. Um, anyway, from his items and his, uh, his pyromancies, we can uh, assume that... One of the things that got thrown in here to get get rid of it, get it out of the world, so that the gods didn't have to deal with it, was um, Chaos Pyromancy. The Witch of Isolith has Chaos Pyromancy, a few other people have Chaos Pyromancy, mostly it's just this guy. Um, oh yeah, I forgot, he's extremely magic resistant, which is good for him and bad for us. He's also very pyromaniacal. I think we can make him waste all his spells and then just wail on him. Maybe he's just um, damage resistant overall. Because as you can see, Soul Spears are hitting him for like... Was that 50 damage I got on the first one? And I'm used to my Soul Spears doing, what, like six, 700 damage easily on most enemies, so... Fortunately, he is determined to just cast Pyromancies, which means he's very easy to backstab. Or just ordinarily stab, just general stabbing. So, not the toughest invader. Unless he hits you, in which case you die from fire. But yeah, so, um... Chaos Pyromancy is fundamentally corrupting, because it is created from an attempt to pervert the course of existence. As we've seen, every time someone tries to prolong the Age of Fire, it results in horrible things happening. So, Gwyn himself has caused the curse of undeath by attempting to prolong the Age of Fire. Um, and, uh... Which of Isolith attempted to recreate the first flame in order to restart the Age of Fire without having to go through the Age of Dark, and that created the Bed of Chaos and the Chaos Flame, and is the origin of demons. Uh, but the use of Chaos Pyromancy itself is inherently corrupting. Um, and if you use it, you are liable to turn into some kind of horrible glob creature. And in ways that are sort of depicted as very kind of cancerous, there is a lot of... Um, cancer-like imagery to Chaos Corrupted Things, which I believe is fitting because um, their origin is, after all, um, the Witches of Ithus Isolith, who, uh, you know, took as their Lord Soul and gained their divinity the Flame of Life, the Soul of Life, the Power of Life. Well, what is life when it runs away from you and it becomes out of control? and self-replicating and um, destructive. I think um, I think cancer is a pretty good uh, idea for what that might be. So this door will lead up to the places we came we want to get to with all the stuff in that we couldn't reach by jumping. You can just you can kill all these guys and we probably should, but it just it takes a while <laughs> it takes a while. Um, I think they're fairly magic resistant, although if they trap us in here we won't have much of a choice. I 
as you can see they are a phalanx so they all have their shields up and they have their spears out um, shields up spears out I am ejected from the phalanx but I think they don't take oh no, they take normal amounts of damage that's fine but I don't think we get anything for killing all of them they're just they drop a decent amount of souls and there's lots of them the main thing is going to be dodging all of these javelins The main thing, the main reason I'm fighting these guys is I'm putting off uh, one of the next areas we need to go through because, or I mean that might happen too. The other reason it's a pain to fight him is that uh, we don't have much AoE. He's, it's really easy to kill this guy with pyromancy. Um, you just lob one fireball in and they all catch on fire and die. So if you don't have pyromancy, it's a lot harder. Well, it's not harder, it's just more time consuming. And in fact, since it's uh, such a lengthy pain to fight him, I'm just not gonna bother. So what we will be doing now is going and fighting the worst enemies in the entire game, and I hate them so much and they suck super bad. Um, and this is not, I'm not the only person who holds this opinion. There's a couple of ways to get into that area. Um, where the hell is my soul puddle? There it is. But what we're going to do first is scurry up here and see what we can see what we can find. Because there's a few more items lying around, protected by several more guys. It's Dark Souls. There's always more guys. And of course, because we died, um, all of the enemies that <laughs> all of the enemies we cleared out earlier have all come back. So I need to watch out for arrows and stuff as well. I say immediately getting stuck in the uh, what is that? The lower abdomen? Ow! And the leg. <laughs> uh, time for more jokes from like 2009 because I just took an arrow in the knee. Fortunately, I'm still an adventurer. So this is how you reach this to cut it down, but it is easier just to hit it with an arrow. <laughs> Huh, a drop. I think those guys only ever drop broken straight swords. Which, um, as an inveterate homosexual, I find unpleasant. Ah, here we go. So this drops us down into a crypt. What do we not like about crypts? Well, they're full of undead. What do we not like about undead? Well, they're hard to kill. What do we not like about this crypt? It's full of skeleton wheels. The most unpleasant and frustrating thing in the entire game to fight. In fact, I think I should have equipped... Yeah, I don't have the spell I usually use to deal with them. Um, oh, here he comes. So these guys do an absolute shit ton of damage. They do... Well, they don't do very much damage. They do a shit ton of instances of very small amounts of damage, but with strong knockback. So if they hit you basically at all, um, they will hit you about 15 times and you'll get stun locked to death. This makes them difficult to fight and irritating to deal with. You can ping them with arrows and draw them out and fight them one by one. That's generally the best way to deal with them. Um, I like to use the homing spells, uh, which summon several small soul arrows that float around your head and automatically fire anything that gets too close to you, which is useful for these guys, because you can cast that, and then when they just fucking motorcycle towards you, um, it will automatically fire on them and deal with them. In fact, it often kills them before they even reach you. But yeah, um, take them one by one, rodeo them. That's how you deal with Skeleton Wheel. I think there's like eight or nine of them down here. Um, there's the next one. Fortunately, it's not so dark you can't see them. If you block with your shield, you can potentially block every hit, but um, you need a shield with high stability because, uh, well, they do enough posture damage, I think is the term, that uh, eventually they will break your guard and then they will do bonus damage to you as they run you the fuck over to death. Oh, I should not have switched spells, clearly. Well, there he goes. Bye. These ones are wheelie tough. That was far too obvious. 
I believe that in it might be just be in Dark Souls 2, but it might be in Dark Souls 1. Uh, they can actually drop their drop their wheels as a, a weapon that you can wield, which is extremely fun. Uh, unfortunately, you can't turn into a motorcycle like they can, but you can uh, like give it like a wheel spin um, and um, do damage to people. You can, in fact, dual wield them and really turn into a motorcycle. Fuck. Yeah, okay, so that's what happens. <sighs> okay. So, unfortunately, we were killed by the last one, and I can't skip that area because we have to go through there to unlock the next part of the zone. But I will probably take the other entrance unnecessarily just to grab the stuff that's hidden down there. Basically, these guys and their, their rapid flailing attack, which is always what catches you out when you get um, when you get overconfident. Yeah, skeleton wheels are that times a thousand. In fact, the nastiest part of the game, in my opinion, is the the big room on the way down to uh, Grave Lord Nito, the boss arena for him. Uh, well, actually, no, the boss arena immediately before Pinwheel, which is the the sub boss you have to fight first. There's just a giant dark room full of skeleton wheels. And as I believe I mentioned on a previous stream, one of the only changes they made between um, the base game and this remastered version is to add a bonfire in a secret room besides that area, which seems like a good idea. But in fact, see, there he is, there's one. But in fact, it's a terrible idea because if you rest there, the only way out is to go through all of the fucking skeletons. Which is bad. <laughs> bad and a mistake and terrible. Which means that if you get trapped there, you're basically stuck forever. Which is terrible. Man, fuck you. I hate these guys. Am I even hitting him? Oh god. Well, goodbye to 40,000 souls or however, I ha however much I had. Yeah, I'm not sure even you could manage to pull a joke. Uh, pull that joke off. Oh yeah, no, they they definitely got toned down. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Everyone hates them. They're like the most complained about enemy in the entire game, which is why it's good that there's only two locations that feature them. Um, unfortunately, both of those locations are plot critical and we have to go through them. Well, no, the other one is not plot critical. Uh, no, I tell a lie. This one is not plot critical. You don't have to come to the Painted World of Arianus at all, but once you come here, you do have to fight them to get out again. Um, and... Well, now, see, that one's suitable to any kind of any kind of skeleton. Um, but yeah. You do have to be careful, otherwise you'll be boned. Let's see if I can manage it this time. Best spell active. Let's start casting and step out. Okie dokie. If I can dodge at the last minute, he won't be able to chase me down here. Yes, he will. <laughs> you sir, suck. You suck so bad and everyone hates you. There's not even anything down here. Uh, there's like two secret invisible walls down here and they're a pain to find, but there's also, I think, two or three skeleton wheels hiding. As I've said before, the key the key thing you learn when you start playing Dark Souls, if you are going to actually keep playing Dark Souls, is always turn corners with your shield up. I'm not sure if they can go- that's an invisible- that's a, a, a fake wall, but I don't know if they can go through the fake walls themselves. Has he spotted me? Can he hear me? Can I get him? Oh shit, there he is. Yeah, how you like it, huh? Oh, I thought that was another one. Terrified me. Ah, here we go. So this should be... Uh, we'll have to go back down there in a second, but this should... Hi. This guy's reasonable, actually. This guy does not attack you. If you kill him, you get a unique item. You don't have to. I don't 
think it costs you anything if you kill him, so I'm just going to do a murder for no reason. Um, normally, I don't like to attack NPCs that are not uh, aggressive. However, this guy has an item, so I want it. I thought that this was the, the way into the back door that we found previously, but it is not. That is a different staircase. So, let's not get overconfident, because one of those wheels... Is all it takes to just kill the shit out of me. What the hell is... How the hell did... So that guy... That is one of the... One of the demons. They're not supposed to be down here. Did he fall down the well? How d Sir, how did you get in here? I'm, af I'm afraid you'll have to leave. This is not an acceptable place for you to be. This is staff only. And as you can see, I have a staff. You, sir, do not. So, hang on, how the hell did I get in here? Was it this way? No, that's blocked off. There's this tiny little labyrinth that's in incredibly frustrating to explore. Not least because of the constant fear of these fuckers. I'm gonna soul spear this one just to fucking get rid of it. Massive overkill, but I just don't want to deal with him. The annex key. That opens the locked door that I was talking about. Um, incidentally, you may have noticed that the illusory door removed noise played. That's because... Oh, fuck. Uh, that's because that demon attempted to attack me and uh, made it disappear. I think there's something else down here, but I don't know for sure. I might just move on. Um, my avaricious nature wants me to try and get every single item, but... Um, I'm kind of terrified of these things now. It will suck ass if I get killed by another fucking skeleton wheel. I think, okay, I think I've seen everywhere. Um, so, that means we should just head out into the big room and very carefully kill the rest of these skeleton wheels, one by one. That's a trick I can only pull off once more. So what I assume happened is that the, um, Legion Demon, or whatever they're called, uh, Phalanx Demon, essentially followed me down the well and then but that can't have been the case because he came from over here how did he pass all the way <laughs> i'd have just gone for that it was a marrowing experience i think har i think putting harrowing in there to show what you mean is uh it breaks the rules of puns you just have to let it stand alone Can you come up with one for calcium? Because the best I got is like, old calcium all destroyed, but that's not great. Can I get this guy? Yep, there we go. Oh, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I think it's just that one left, but I need to... Uh, fuck. The other thing is they move so fast that they get out of your um, targeting reticule really quickly. Which is potentially disastrous. There we go. That should be the last of them. Um... I'll just do this now, just in case. Anyway, the thing about making all these skeleton puns is that they're really humorous.
If I die suddenly now, I'm going to feel so stupid. Skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. Are we good? Yep, I think that's all of them. Okay, and I think I got all the items in the secret room. I don't think there's any other secret passages. I suppose what must have happened is that that demon, when I came down here via the well, passed around and down this route by, to get into the area, which is bizarre, and I've never seen it happen. Either that or he just, like, clipped through the floor somehow. There's a bunch of guys who will ambush me if I go over there. So we're not going to. We'll let them come to me instead, which is always the safer option when you're a wizard. We're also going to continue to just ignore the phalanx demon. Just like, bye. Presumably uh, they were trapped in these cubes, or various of the entities trapped in this place were in those cubes. In fact, perhaps the inhabitants of this area who aren't um, aggressive and monstrous are... Um... Why can I not... Oh, there we go. Uh... Maybe the ones who were put here in cubes were, were prisoners of some sort, were thrown in here by the gods of Anor Londo to get rid of them. That's a useful warning, so let's give it a point. Because, uh, yeah, we will get attacked by more crow demons shortly. One of the advantages to hitting these guys is that they're like 40% head. So it's pretty easy to get just get chain headshots on them. It's one of the only times I'm using my bow to do damage. There are a lot of repeated sound effects in games. It's always kind of funny to me how familiar I am with some of the stock sound effect libraries. Um, there's one particular like magic twinkle sound effect that is used as the like audio bark when you select a wisp in Warcraft 3. And I hear that so many other places. It's just hilarious to me every time I hear it. Because I think, oh, I know you. You were the audio bark from Warcraft 3. Yowza. Do I have... No, I don't have any soul spears. Can I hit them with a great soul arrow? Probably. These are quite easy to stagger, but they just are so dangerous with that grab attack. We have to be very careful. So we actually got lucky. There's two of them up there, and they normally wait for you to get up there and, and, and then ambush you rather than pathing down to fight you. On the other hand, I normally approach this from the other side, so... Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Like, there's, there's like particular gun-loading sound effects, and I'm like, oh, I've heard you in 15 games. Sound effect that's in the movie I'm watching. Ah yes, the duel of idiots. Pyromancy versus sorcery. Who will win? Sorcery, obviously. That's a death hole. You don't go down there unless you're really unlucky. If we can bait a grab out of this one, we can make it fall straight down the hole. I say. Lying. There we go. <laughs> Um, they're so agile and they jump around so much, they're generally easy to bait into falling down holes, which is usually what we want them to do because they're so difficult to actually fight. So that's the, uh, partner of Velka gear. That's another reason why this area is associated with Velka and why, uh, we can make some of the inferences about Velka that we do, about oppositionality. Oh, yeah, if you come and stand here, then the crows try and get you, they just fall down the hole. So that's, actually, that's a good shout. Let's... Give that an upvote as well. Oh, fuck off, guys. Leave me alone. I've had enough of you. Come drop down a hole. That's one. That's two. Although I think that one survived. That one clipped through the wall and landed down there. So I'm going to have to deal with it later. Uh, I'm not sure if it can path all the way around up here. I think it'll lose, lose track. Over there somewhere, maybe? Where's he going? 
I'll probably get 500 souls in like 10 minutes and have no idea why. Hmm, okay, right, is there- oh yeah, there's a few other items over here, including a useful one, which is going to allow us to make occult weapons. Occult being a damage type that mostly damages things like Things associated with Anor Londo. Occult is the damage of darkness, and uh, Anor Londo is, of course, all descended from Gwyn, god of light. So it makes sense that those two would be oppositional. I don't think there's any more crows around. I think it's because you hear them in different places that, um you kind of recognize them. But it is also the case that they sort of live in your brain in a way that other things don't. Liar ahead? Liar ahead? Why? Well, I wonder what this guy says. Hmm. This is one of those many places in Dark Souls where people pretend there's a secret wall, but there isn't, as you can see. I think that's everything we need. So yeah, there's a lot of Velka stuff thrown in here, and the fact that it's thrown in here and that we know that this is a place where the gods of Anor Londo throw stuff they don't want to deal with, like for example the ember that allows smiths to make weapons that can harm them. Um, it does all kind of add up. Did I get that? Yeah, I did. That was the Velka's rapier. I honestly think that stock things should be used more often. I think that... Um, you know, if if, uh, if a company make two games in a series, you always see them being rebuked for having the same chair models in one or the other. It's, it's called lazy development. I just think it's efficient development. Like, unless there's a huge graphical leap between two games in a series, why not use the same, um, you know, ordinary everyday assets, especially if they're ones that represent ordinary everyday things and look fine for that purpose. Yeah, exactly. Although I would play a game about chairs. Oh, there's a... There's a knight around here. Maybe I should actually... I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get shot in the back with an arrow. It's, um... It's an expensive hobby. You know, the medical bills do add up, but it's just so satisfying, ultimately. Yeah, that one's pretty good. I'll buy that. Uh, I'm going to go rest at the bonfire so that I can get my good spells back and maybe remember to equip an even better one, if I have a better one. I don't quite have enough of that, but do we have a better spell? Remedy's kind of tempting. Remedy is the only healing sorcery um, which cures all uh, bleed and poison buildups. Sorcery of the Red-Robed Yulva, one of the sealers of New Londo, one of New Londo's unique healing sorceries. Perhaps she abandoned her duty to take her healing arts back to Blighttown. So this is what I mean, that all of these things are kind of tied together. Later we go to New Londo and we meet another sealer and we learn about their whole deal. Um, and we found Remedy uh, near where we found the weird, overgrown polyp monster in Blighttown, which is also found near the sealer's outfit, so it's kind of... There's a theory that she went there to try and cure the, the people of Blighttown of their weird problem and um, ended up succumbing to it. Which is the sort of thing that happens a lot in Dark Souls. Ah, here we go. Homing Soul Mass. Very useful spell that does very useful things. Also, I do kind of want to be human again. I like to spend as much time as, hu uh, as a human as possible, just like in real life. Um, which is funny to anyone who knows that I find myself strongly identifying with robots that want to be people but aren't due to, let's say, autism, that I I used to fairly strongly identify as a kind of a, a robot that didn't know how to do human things and be a human person. But guess what? I figured out how to be human, so that's good. Anyway, that total and irrelevant tangent aside, it's time for backstabs. So what we're going to do now is sprint straight through the middle, ignoring the old, uh, uh, I'm never going to get his name right. <laughs> the 
It's not Legion Demon, it's definitely something else. Um, wait, hang on, tell you how to do what? You gotta, you gotta factor in that when I am, uh... oh, okay. Um, what I recommend you do is that you go off of your medication that you've been taking for 10 years that has been altering your brain chemistry and then suddenly something will go clunk in your brain and you'll be very irrational and um, strange for a year, but you will also figure out how to socialize. I mean, it's very common for autistic people to identif overly identify with, like, robot characters in children's cartoons and stuff. Um, especially the ones who are like, beep boop, I wish to be human but don't know how. You know, very kind of, um, data from Star trek E. But one of the things you've got to remember, um, that when I'm streaming, uh, I'm just in stri like stream of consciousness mode with my brain, so I do not remember what I have said, even 10 seconds after I've said it, half the time. My brain just moves on. We're somewhere else now. We're donezo. Which means if I say something and you ask me about it, I will probably ask for clarification. Now see, that's a healthy amount of damage to be doing to a guy. We can actually do so much damage that we can just kill him through his shield. Um, but yeah, I probably have ADHD or something also. I've always had attention problems and memory problems that fit the profile pretty much exactly. So that's why I'm so forgetful and I tend to go on tangents. Um, and why when I'm recording my Let's Plays, which as I said, ah, like an hour ago, um, I tend to do um, much more difficult and... Uh, oh no, Dark Spirit D's nuts has invaded me. Can I go into the boss fight and just fight the boss instead of him? Considering I've just spent all my soul arrows. And I kind of rely- oh, soul spear. And I kind of rely on one-shotting people with soul spear for PvP. Um, hmm. Let's just go fight the boss. See, he's gone. He's fucked off. I believe it always despawns a phantom when you enter a boss arena. So if we look closely... You can see she's got little scaly things above her eyes. She's also got... The way her, like, face blends into her hair. If you actually look at the texture, um, it has, like, a scaly pattern to it. Do I have... Did I even pick up the binoculars? I don't see them. Yeah, okay, we can't take a closer look. But the immortal dragons themselves are hairy. Um, not infrequently. If, you, if, you, if we meet the one remaining immortal dragon... We can see that he is covered in hair. Also, there's normally a ton of messages lying around this area saying like, feet, try feet, weakness, feet. Who art thou? One of us thou art not. If thou hast stepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires shall be requited not. I always assumed that this was a... Uh... Okay, so I mean that one's being a pervert. But I always assumed that it was people being, oh, feet. Internet men, they sure do love those feet pics, but actually... <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago when I played through this game the last time, I fought her for the first time. I always skipped her as a boss because she doesn't start a fight with you and I don't like to fight NPCs that aren't fighting me. But, 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 it turns out she goes immediately invisible for the whole fight and the only way to, to track her position is through footprints in the snow. Which is why there are all those messages about feet. So, um, let's talk to her a bit more before we murder her thou for no reason. Returneth whence thou came. This land is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. Thou must return it whence thou came. This le I so let's kick off the fight with um, our heaviest attacks, because we won't be able to land any once she goes invisible. So we need to keep an eye on those feet now. 
I didn't have much trouble with this the last time, but you never know. Wowzers, okay. Well, she does, if you cut her tail off, you get a good dagger out of it, but um, it's very difficult to get a tail cut on a boss you can't see. And it's quite a small tail as well. Where did she go? Can she teleport as well? She should be weak to um, lightning damage, so if we keep wailing, we should get her eventually. Her soul can be used to make a good item as well, but not one I particularly want to use. If I can't beat her, I might just leave. Um, I think I level up. I think my dagger is less effective than last time I played through this. There she is. She doesn't have a health bar because she's invisible, I, I assume. Um, if you could see her health bar. Well, actually, no, I suppose the boss bar at the bottom of the screen would be pretty normal. So I don't know why she doesn't have a health bar. I suppose part of the challenge of an invisible boss is not being able to see how damaged they are. She keeps standing in the, the dry bit. I need to be able to see where she is. I also need to not die, which will happen if I take one more hit. There she is. This feels unfair, but I suppose I did start this fight for no reason. I just accidentally wasted my last healing item. I do have a ton of humanity that I could use to heal, but um, I don't have it on my quick item bar, so... Obviously our only answer is to go sicko mode and just destroy her, but... Um, hmm... I should have put the blood resistance ring on before this fight if I have it. I didn't think to. Fortunately, I don't think she moves very fast. Which means I might be able to get away with uh, popping a humanity real quick. Or she might just yeet me off this cliff if I'm not careful. There she is. She's coming this way. I believe at a certain point in her... After a certain amount of damage, she does just, like, turn visible briefly, but, um, don't quote me on it. I think if I take a hit right now, I'll die from blood loss. Dark Souls is pretty good. Footprints, footprints, footprints. There she is. Ha! That was close. I think she has a leaping attack, maybe. I'm just going to waste all my humanity healing. I have no idea how much damage she's taken.
I do think I do think they should give you a hit point bar. It's really irritating to not be able to see how much damage you're taking. Uh, she's taking. I'm just going to keep my distance until my bleed ticks down because I don't want to die from blood loss. Which I won't at this stage unless I'm really unlucky, but still. Why take the risk? Can't be much more. Okay, okay, that's gonna kill me. we go. Honestly, seeketh me nothing. I, I don't know what to tell you. I just like killing. So here we have the Xanthus set as well. Um, whenever you kill an invading NPC, they usually have um, a corpse somewhere in the world appear that will have their items on it. Uh, which sort of implies that that's where they died in their own instance of reality, wherever, however separated from you by that was by by time. But yeah, so that is at last the end of this zone. Turns out there's only one way out in the end. She tells you to leap off the plank, but there isn't actually a plank here. Was it all a dream? We will never know. Uh, although these guys have respawned, which then makes it slightly difficult to get out of here. And I'm going to have to deal with the fact that I now have five liquid humanity I don't want to lose. In fact, I'm just going to go. Like, bye, guys. I'm just going to ollie outie. I don't need to fight any of these guys, and I should be able to sprint past most of them. Yeah, it was almost a kind of a joke. Um, it's kind of like a, a startle moment. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. So here we are, back in Anorlondo, which is where we came specifically to go inside that painting for no real reason. <laughs> um, Getting sucked into paintings without really your knowledge or consent is a is a recurring theme throughout the Souls games. Regardless, uh, actually, I could even just Homeward Bone. I didn't need to fight those guys at all. I could just, well, I mean, we're right there now, so why waste it? But let's go. So that leaves five avenues for exploration. We could go fight Sif um, and possibly do that DLC. We could go fight the next four bosses we actually need to fight. One of them's pretty near here, so we could just take care of that instead of going and doing something else. Seath the Scaleless is up here in the Archive. Um, he's very magic resistant, so he's a pain to fight as a sorcerer. It might be worth levelling up our shitty starting dagger that I now realise we've carried for the entire game. Um, but with the lightning damage we can fight him anyway. Alternatively, we could go to the Catacombs. Um, but I don't want to go there until we've done the Demon Ruins, because there's a very useful item to get through the Tomb of Giants at the, uh, the Demon Ruins. So... Um, we could go to the Demon Ruins and do that, or we could go to New Londo and take care of New Londo. New Londo is one of the darkest parts of the game, uh, tonally. So we might leave that for later. What was it? Oh yeah, I was gonna get this up to 20, I think. So I have lots of stamina to stam with. I think we'll go do the archive because it's right here. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Huh. No, fuck it, let's go to the archive. It'll be a pain to get through anyway, so why not just uh, take care of it now? So, on a previous stream we came over this way uh, and we saw some cool stuff, which was behind a big golden wall. We can't get in there because the golden wall's in the way. Well, guess what? That golden wall is no more. Because we went and placed the Lord Vessel 
at the behest of a really unpleasant guy that we don't like. Why are we doing what he says? Well, nobody else is telling us what to do and somebody needs to. It's been a while since I fought these. Well, that's all for him. Oh, whoa, hello. You haven't shown up for a while. How are things? Because what I'm doing is murdering people. Hooray! Even one who did not ask for it. I'm not a wizard, I'm a ninja. You can tell from my outfit. Although, it's not actually a ninja. You're kind of from the, the far... This is this is an outfit that is the, the, like... I think it's referred to as being from the Far East, which is sort of ambiguous. Um, but it's clearly designed around, um, like, traditional Chinese... Um, gear rather than the uh, generic Japanese ninja outfit which is just interesting it's nice to see that take rather than yet another ninja regardless we have no capacity to ninja so we're going to continue casting spells as we go so we fought some of these previously uh, those ones were less magic resistant and they also did not have heavily armored buttholes as you can Look at that. I've never seen such a heavily armoured butt. That's because the armoured ball that you find earlier in the game has a weak spot, which is its butthole, and you can stab up there as much as you like. Uh, it's a very easy way to beat it, just chaining backstabs. However, um, they've clearly upgraded them by this point, since you can no longer do that. I've used all my soul arrows, so for the next one I'll have to be a bit more careful. I say immediately before failing to be careful. These things do a ton of damage, and they also have uh, an interesting ability that is not necessarily new unique, but is fairly rare, where um, if you hit them in melee, you get like a little knockback effect, um, as if you struck a shield, but they don't have shields, they're just made of metal. I guess you could say that they're made of shields. Yowza. Well, no, I think a butt counts as heavily armoured when it's got visible armour plating and spikes modelled on it, which you can see under the tail has been added. It's not clear why these things are here or who put them there. Um, or for that matter, why there's one in the Undead Parish that doesn't have an armoured butt. It's really funny to me that you can just back up out of their out of the range of their charge. They very politely stop charging at you. Anyway, apologies to any furries who may be watching. This is not ideal, but unfortunately the pig did attack me first. Actually, that might not be true. I might just be telling lies. Well, I mean, I mean, you're allowed to just declare your own butt as being heavily armored. You know, that's your prerogative as a butt haver. Anyway, here we come into the only forced, the only forced fail in the entire game will be happening to us in a minute. And I think after that happens, that will probably be where it is time to, I might as well spend some of my humanity before I lose it all. In fact, actually I could equip uh, a spare ring of sacrifice to make sure I don't lose it all when we go through the forced fail section. Let's see, we do have one. Uh, yeah, that loses nothing, that prevents curse, so nothing's going to curse us here. Actually, I mean, Seath can curse you, but I don't think you get cursed in this fight particularly. I really love the design of the Duke's Archive. It's really pretty, but it's also very sterile in a way that very much fits um, a place that has been co-opted for uh, very sterile magics. Crystal magic, specifically. Which itself is as corrupting as um, Chaos Pyromancy, which is interesting. 
Um, there's perhaps there's something there to do with you know the extents of order and of chaos. You know, either one pursued too far will corrupt you. So this was the uh, the archive of magic that is retained in Anor Londo by the gods of Anor Londo. Um, who used it before Seath is a mystery. However, Seath himself was given a dukedom by Gwyn for the uh, as a reward for having betrayed all the other dragons at uh, the war at fairly soon after the beginning of time. So you know stuff and things. By the way, that was an intentional uh, backstab dodge. <laughs> that one channeler over there is a huge pain. He does a ton of damage, so... And he also buffs all of the skeletons near him. Didn't quite get my timing right on that one. So it's generally better to lure the skeletons back here and fight them, uh, but they're really tough themselves. In addition to the ordinary skeleton warrior moveset, they have a unique attack where they uh, do a, a sudden shoulder charge with those spikes on their shoulders. Which will uh, interrupt your spellcasting and is startling. You can actually parry these guys fairly easily, but I'm being careful because it's really easy to die here. This is this is a killer room. This is a death trap room, as you can see by all the blood stains on the floor. There's like what is that? Six other players have died here recently. Uh, you buff something without muscle by doing a very silly dance and wiggling your staff in the air. It's actually delightful. Um, I'm very fond of the channeler dance. And you can do it too if you manage to get one of their weapons to drop. You might do it in a second if we get lucky. Doesn't look like it. Oh, there it is! Haha! -ha! So when he does that, all of the skeletons around him get a huge boost to their defense and their attack. Um... And they're tough enough already. You can see it's got like a sparkly effect around it. That means it's buffed. And yes, I am aware, of course, that you were making a pun, but um, I thought that one was a bit subpar. You need to get the, uh, you need to get some more reps in. Incidentally, this is a crystal golem. They're in a few different places in the game. Um, they're not that difficult to fight, but they have a big health pool. I actually think they're really pretty. Um, My appearance is massively improved by the uh, upgraded visuals in the remaster. That's all for him. So I think... Huh, does he drop something? No, I, I, for some reason I always think that guy has a unique drop. I, for some reason I thought that's where the Peculiar Doll dropped, but it isn't. And it's also unrelated to the other DLC pack. Um, which is has an entirely different Crystal Golem involved. Actually, no, I tell a lie. Once we have fulfilled a very specific criterion, that Golem will have an item when we kill it. Called the Mysterious Pendant, or the Broken Pendant, or something like that. Which unlocks the second DLC uh, section, but I cannot for the life of me remember what the step you have to do first. That it, it's convoluted. Dark Souls's plot lines are extremely convoluted, and the accesses to its DLCs are incredibly convoluted. Why? We don't know. <laughs> From Soft is just kind of like that. It's actually pretty easy to parry their jump attacks if you aren't terrified of getting shot in the back by a soul arrow. They're also fairly effective melee combatants, uh, if you're not careful, and they do something incredibly frustrating that we'll see in a moment. Unless I kill him in one hit, which I might. As soon as they take damage, they start to cast an escape spell. Fortunately, I've managed to cancel it. Halfway through the uh, casting animation for that escape spell, um, they become intangible and you can't hit them, and then their animation finishes and they teleport to somewhere else in the current zone. Which is... Extremely irritating, um, especially when it puts them in a much better firing position for them to just artillery you. I should get back into the habit of um, parrying, actually. It's quite useful for this zone. Because 
because a backstab will not kill a, a skeleton warrior in one hit, or a crystal skeleton warrior rather, but it will kill... backstab will kill the archers in one hit, but in order to kill these guys you need to get the parry on them, because um, backstabs do less damage than parries. Because parries are more risky and more difficult. At least I assume that's the rationale behind the difference, but I don't actually know. <laughs> I love the little growls as skeletons die. It's a very good classic skeleton noise, if you ask me. Skeletons should either be like high pitched screaming, like <laughs> or they should be um they should be like the noise that that guy made. Uh yep, that's got the chain curled towards the back so we can tell it is not a mimic. Ah, good, some more twink. The most useful upgrade material in the game for certain people, but probably not for us. Actually, that's a thought. I have Velka's rapier now. Can I wield it? Where? Ugh, I've got so many goddamn weapons. I would need 16 dexterity. If I put my next couple of levels into dexterity, we can start equipping this, uh, which is useful because it already has, um, it has occult damage naturally which is going to be useful in a couple of different places, but it also has natural magic scaling. Normally, to get magic scaling, you have to enchant a weapon with a particular upgrade path, but uh, Velko's Rapier comes with it already. It has a good moveset, and it's light enough that we can wield it. And of course, because it is not... Um, because you haven't enchanted it manually, uh, it does not lose its physical stat scaling, so it will scale with three of your stats instead of two. Um, and it has very high scaling with your intelligence, so that's actually a viable weapon for us to switch to. Once we have put the points in. But before we go do that, uh, we need to go die like an idiot. Can we provoke an attack out of this guy and parry it? Clearly not, just backstabs. Oh, I nearly missed this guy. There's a lot of uh, skeleton warriors hiding around corners in this zone, as you will see soon. So yeah, from here we have a very a much higher view of Anor Londo. You can you can see down through the mists. Um, it looks a lot less uh, glorious from up here. But it's also it also also clear just how big Anor Londo is. There's only a tiny part of it that you actually visit. So we just need to kill a couple more of these guys. This should kill them. <laughs> yeah. They are quite magic resistant, but we've leveled up our intelligence so much that even though they're magic resistant, they still take an acceptable amount of damage from our spells. Um, a lot more than non-crystal warrior skeletons, but um, that's fine. That's not the end of the world. I think this is a mimic. Be wary of chest, and there's a blood stain, and be wary of monster. Yep, that's a mimic. That's a mimic, baby. So standard rules apply. Wail on it as much as possible before it wakes up fully, and then run away. Run away, because that spin kick will kill me if I'm not careful. And it's also difficult to get enough clearance to uh, heal up. As you can see. Yep, that's probably going to kill me. Oof. Hashtag devoured. So that's wasted one of my rings, which is a huge pain in the ass. Um, in fact, I might leave my ring, my, my one remaining ring of sacrifice off until we get through this area to where the boss will uh, insta-kill us. Uh, dexterity, 14. We only need 16, so in fact I could probably get to 16 right now and try out Velka's Rapier, which will be less effective against these guys because of that magic resistance and the fact that it does magic damage, but it's still worth a try just to see what its effects are like. Uh, I want both of these. I don't need these. If I... I think these are... Are these 5,000 each? In which case I need four of them. I might need one more, actually. Yeah, a few souls short. Uh, as opposed to a few so short souls, which is what you get when you kill the furtive pygmy. So easily forgotten that we have not talked about him very much at all on our way through this strange game. So since I've upgraded my uh, endurance a bit, we could actually start wearing some slightly heavier armor, as you can see. Our car and we, of course, have equipped the uh, 
Ring of Favor and Protection. So with those two um, aspects, we actually have a much higher equipment load limit than we used to. And we could boost it even more with Havel's Ring, but we don't need to, so we won't. I think I will go back to... Let's have the Ring of Steel Protection for a bit more armor. Uh, so 69.6 divided by 4. I don't know if anyone's good at maths, but... Um, in fact, I'm just going to actually use my calculator real quick. Um, 69, nice, divided by 4, equals 17.25. Um, which means that we can go up to 17.25 plus slightly more before we start to overload. Um, but yeah, so after we get through that little forced fail, then we will see what's up. So let's see. Um... Falcus Rapier, let's give it a go. That is up to 14, we can also equip some slightly heavier armor if we can find some. Let's find something that will boost our defenses, that's... Uh, that's... a fair bit better. Not as pretty, but whatever. Um, that's significantly better, and that takes us up to 17.2, so let's leave it there. There we go, now we're playing Fashion Souls. I'll just make sure I still have my fast roll. I think I do. So as you can see, the move set for the rapier is very different. You can do those chaining stabs. You can do, you can do a big sweep, uh, which can do these multiple combo moves. Oh, I forgot we have to bring the lift back down because life is terrible. If you two-hand it, you can do more damage, but I don't think it has a different move set and. Uh, it has a jumping attack. Some rapiers, instead of having a leaping attack, do like a back step as part of their attack uh, cycle. But that's very unusual. It's one of the benefits of using a rapier is that you can um, attack while backstepping by, by using the jump attack replacement. But um, yeah. Let's see if we can uh, kill one of these without getting horribly murdered. 425. I believe that was a lot more than the uh, parry kills I was getting previously, which means the backstab should be doing a lot more as well, because it is more of a precision weapon, I believe. Yes, see, we are doing enough damage to one-hit these guys. Um, weapons have different ratings for how much damage they do on uh, critical attacks, which is backstabs and so on. Oh, mistimed it that time. So we even have enough stamina to chain attacks until something's dead, which is unusual as a as a sorcerer, who of course is all about that magic. So we might uh, just keep this weapon for a while. We should be able to upgrade it with our silver, uh, our white titanite as well. Twinkling titanite, that's what it's fucking called. White titanite, something else entire entirely. Come on, lads, let's not be a problem. 69, nice. I don't want to rely on boring jokes that everybody makes, but, you know, sometimes you get lucky. And sometimes when you get lucky, you get... No, let's not. So yeah, we should be nearly done. We just need to work our way back up and then not die to that thingamajig, and then also not die to any of the other thingamajigs, and then also die to the boss. Can I just blast this guy to death and not have to deal with him? I think I can. Eat soul arrow. Enjoy the projected force of my psychological issues. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see how it is. Uh, Big Dykery is willing to go to those depths, even when I would not. I love that I can parry these guys' uh, jump attacks. It's actually one of their easiest attacks to parry. Um, they're dropping a lot of straight swords as well. The reason why I'm getting so many drops is because, um, uh, because I have a bunch of humanity currently. Because I have four liquid humanity. Uh, 
every point of it massively increases your, your drop chances. So you get a lot of people running around with like 15, but um, I'm always worried about losing it. So I like to keep my, my hard humanity if possible. And I usually die often enough that I don't build up any soft humanity. Which, for anyone who doesn't know, is the difference between humanity that's an item you have in your inventory, which you can't use unless you... You can't lose unless you use it. And inventory that is currently in your... Uh, humanity that's currently in your character, which will be lost if you die. When you use a hard humanity, it gives you one soft humanity, so generally speaking I like to I like to keep the items in my inventory until I need them so that I don't have a risk of losing them, but that's because I'm a very risk-averse Dark Souls player, which is ironic because I'm also incredibly impatient. Um, I always try and get the extra hit in to kill something a bit faster, which is usually a mistake. You want to be patient and wait for your moment in Dark Souls. That's what it's all about. As you can see, I was impatient there and failed to get the parry. So yeah, we just need to clear out that Mimic and then go up the lift and then that will be pretty much the end of this session. I just, if I Soul Spear him, he'll die immediately. How much can I do with this? Oh, that's actually more than I expected. That's pretty good. Right, time to fight and possibly die this thing again. I'm actually not sure how easy it is to damage one of these with rapiers because of the... Uh, because of the uh, the thrust attack and the fact that these are just fucking giant horrible things. Oh no, we can hit them fine. Gotta be careful to manage my stamina though. Because that grab attack will kill me, no matter what I do. Um, and if I run out of stamina, I can't dodge it. Oh, I got a stagger. There we go, much easier. Is that a, a euphemism? What's shaving the carpet? Or are you, do you mean they literally sound like they're shaving the carpet? Because if it is a euphemism, I feel like I know what it means. Uh, but it's also one I've never ever heard before. So I think there's one guy up here and we should be able to beat him easily and then it's time for the boss and when we fight the boss uh, it's impossible to hurt him so he will kill you. Oh, I thought that guy was going to hit me. Well I mean he did hit me but you know what I mean. I thought he was going to make a melee attack. Is he parrying me? Fuck you. That's my thing that I do. You're not allowed to parry me. This guy has such low stability that you can break his poise with spells pretty easily. Um... He's really heavy. I assume his armor is heavy because of all that crystal shit that's growing out of it. Which sucks for him, I guess, but not for me. The guy who's about to die from spells says what? Huh. Maybe they are. Maybe their carpet's too long and they got fed up with it. Been a while since we've seen a crystal lizard or magic turtle, as we like to call them, because I'm terrible at remembering the proper names for things. She gives a bit more twinkling titanite, which is always nice. Which we'll need to upgrade Velka's rapier because it's a unique item uh, rather than a generic item. Right, time for a boss fight that we can't possibly win. What's up, guy? I like your wings. Very pretty. Can I even hit him? Oh, I can. But he heals immediately because he's immortal, because of reasons. So as you can see, my soul spear is only doing 200 damage to him rather than the 4 or 500 it does to other people. Um, I basically just should let him kill me. Um, he does this if you survive too long. And that insta-kills you. So this is necessary because of um, clever tricks that I will talk about next time. But basically he is um, he's doing the kind of thing players do with regards to um, 
abusing the rules of existence. So instead of waking up at the last bonfire, we have woken up at this bonfire in a prison cell. Um, there is no way to beat that boss. Even speedrunners don't have a trick for it or anything. Um, it's basically just an issue. Also, check this guy out. He's having a snooze. I'm sure that won't be terrible for him later. So, that's going to be all from me for today, I think. Uh, feel free to come join me next time. Well, I said it was a forced fail earlier. Um, but yeah, so feel free to come join me next time. These streams are every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7pm UK time. Also, if you haven't already, check out my YouTube channel for cool Let's Plays that I make that are much more in-depth and carefully planned than this. Um, also, thank you to my Patreon subscribers and anyone who donates to me on Ko-fi. You might want to do that yourselves if you have disposable income, I guess. Uh, additionally, if you feel like it, please recommend my uh, my channels to um, anyone you think might like them. And yes, this is the only forced fail in Souls, as far as I remember. So yeah, I think that's everything. I'm sure I've forgotten some kind of a thing. Oh yeah, follow me on Twitter if you want announcements for uns unsubscribe, uh, for unscheduled streams. Make sure you follow me everywhere you want to follow me. Make sure you check out all my stuff. I make things so that you can enjoy them. But that is going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching.